Hello, hello, hello. So I was going to show you how little of baskets you can make. See this tiny basket? Do that? That's made with cedar bark. Oh, you're going to die again. Darn it. have to go. You may have to just stay here till you die, but then no, I don't want to do that because then once you die, it's so hard to get you to live again. take you there because you'll die. So you have to wait. Okay, I got this one from the bedroom. Hello, one person and one thumbs up. Bless your heart. Okay, so, I'm gonna plug this in back here. Just gonna sit here and show you things. Okay, here we go. Look at that, isn't that perfect? But you know, the only problem with sitting here is that these books look pretty bad. I have to fix this. Oh, this is what Desmond made. Daniel made a VCR out of it. I mean, a VR, a virtual reality picture out of it. Okay. in the car I have to
Okay, how's that? Oh, this one's still crooked. Oh, this one's crooked. That's that. Sorry, I had to do that. Okay. Get too many books out here. Okay, so here we are. So now I was going to show you my little baskets. So. First of all, this is cedar bark, which is sort of, no, it's not cedar bark, it's pine bark. Pretty brittle. That's kind of coming apart. Anyway, that's pine bark. But now I was saying in the last video, you can take a piece of birch bark and you can fold it Anyway, I'm not going to take it apart because I've got quills woven into it here. But this is the box. So you see, you take a, take a piece of bark and you Cut it and fold it, and you end up. So this is just a square, I guess, kind of, pretty much. And then you fold it up and you cut it on the corners. You can put it inside. Anyway, so you can take a piece of birch bark and you can make a box with the lid. And this is just another piece of birch bark that has been cut and you see it's got the patch or the that's the end of the This is woven, this is pine, pine needles, birch bark, and raffia. This is also birch bark with pine needles and raffia. Now you can make designs on this by scratching it. Scratch it and make a sign, or you can scratch the inside. You can make designs like that. This is made of birch bark as well. I use birch bark and then I use some of that dollar store leather to weave it. This is how you work with porcupine quills. This is a sample. So you put two strings on the back, and then you you go across your piece, and then you fold it, and then you sew across it, and then you fold it. And every time you go in, you come out here on this side, you go across it. You come back out, you have two strings. And so you have one string is at the back and one is at the front. And so you're using two different strings to tie as you go. 
And so you're gonna fold it over. And then with this string, you're gonna go across it, down, around that, and back out. Then you lay it across there, and you go across that one. And so you keep going back and forth and back and forth, using the back as your um, way to keep everything there. There's another little birch bark box basket. This is just made with birch bark. This would be, be nice. You could carve on here. So this has got a piece of spruce root around that, or maybe it's a cedar root, and then more cedar roots to tie it. And the, the edges I pegged. This one's got a little thing in it. You could have used those. But anyway, that would not be natural, right? So that's this one and this one and this one. Then there's this one. Now this is done with dental floss and birch bark. And, I don't know if you can tell, but I used pins. To make a picture there and then this one is just folded over and then stitched up and down the outside with dental floss and then I made a bottom and I used so this is a different kind like you can take the bark right off of a branch slide it around until you get you know cut it and then wiggle it push, 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 push all the places so it gets unloosened from the wood in the tree. Then you can twist it and take it right off. Then you take a piece that is maybe not right here, but maybe up here where, where it gets bigger on the branch. So you take another piece and that would be used for a little, for your bottom. And then you can make a top. See? Now, in Sweden, they always use the dark side. See, the white side is to the inside. Oh no, there is no white side on here because it's, I peeled the bark. So it's an inner layer. But also you can wipe it with oil. Any oil, cooking oil is fine. It was very simple to make. I just sat in the, in the park once and I just used a little piece of birch bark. Okay, there you go. Those are the latest little baskets I have. And this one, did you see that one? This is cedar bark and cotton thread. Very simple to make. It's kind of hard to hold on to it because it's so small. And then it doesn't have a doesn't have a rim you see they're just straight I've given away so many now this rim is turned over and this you don't turn it over you just add a piece for the edge anyway there you go that's my my latest little baskets I have big baskets regular baskets I suppose I should show them to you too really good when you put the honey and the ginger in the teapot. It's a beautiful teapot. And the honey will keep us from getting the coronavirus, we hope. I don't know where it is. Where is it going to pop up next? Could it be in your town? Could it be in mine? So when do we stop going to big gatherings? I didn't hug anybody at church on Sunday. I didn't shake any hands. I did give one person a hug, actually. Turned my face away. Because I don't know where you've been for the last 14 days. I don't know who you've been in contact with and where they've been. But 
not all cases are originating from places with cases. So I think it's, I mean, it's jumping. Didn't it start in animals and jump to people? Anyway, so I should make a video on that. Mm -hmm. Don't you think how to prepare for the coronavirus? Let's stop and make a video on that. All right, goodbye. Thanks for dropping by and your thumbs up too. And remember, you can.